Today is the 12th of March 2013. My name is Ben Fielden and this interview is for the Ming Ai Institute Chinese Work First project. Could I begin by asking your name? Uh, I'm Katie Tsi. And can you spell that for me? Uh, K-A-T-Y. My surname is T-S-E. And when were you born? 1952. And whereabouts were you born? Hong Kong. Could you tell me a little bit about your family? Uh, I'm, uh, um, I, I come from Hong Kong and um, uh, I have two brothers, uh, one older and one younger. And we were all brought up in Hong Kong. Whereabouts do you come in that order? Uh, I'm the second uh, amongst my siblings, and I'm the only daughter in the family. What work did your mother and father do? My mum is a full-time housewife who stays at home, uh, raising the family. And my father worked as a manager in an export and import company in Hong Kong until he was um, 70 years old. And what education did you have? I went to an Italian common school in Hong Kong, and I completed my uh, postgraduate program in... Uh, social policy and public administration in the UK. And when about did you come to the UK? Uh, I came in 1979. And what motivated your reasons for leaving China? Then? Oh, um, I was um, uh, uh, much younger then, and um, I just feel that... Uh, well, at that time I was actually working at a, at a, at a, a, um, a foreign bank in Hong Kong, and I just felt that um, I need to expand my horizon. So... Um, I eventually decided to empower myself through travelling. And my first stop was England, where I um, picked up my education here. Um, what did jobs did you have before working at this community centre? I worked... Um, well, when I was studying, I, was, I actually worked at a um, supermarket to save up for my tuition fees. Um, and then after I got married, I worked at a publishing company uh, and later at the UK Consumer Council. Was there anything in particular that drew you to any of those jobs? That I remember. Um, when I was working at the supermarket, I worked very hard because I had to save up for the whole year's tuition fee. So uh, in the summer, I would work from uh, 8 o'clock in the morning until 11 at night, seven days a week. So that's a uh, hard life of a student. When did you join the centre? I started uh, as a, co- a steering committee member in 1986, so that was almost 27, eight years ago. Why did you become involved in the centre? Well, at that time, I was actually working um, at the UK Consumer Council, uh, and um, this, this was back in 1985, and I just feel that I wanted to do something in my spare time that involves the, with the Chinese community. Um, so I actually approached... Um, the, it's the um, Information Advice Centre in Chinatown. That was the only uh, um, Chinese community organisation that was available uh, at that time to provide some uh, advice. Um, so and they, at that point, they told me that they, one of the job briefs is to um, uh, develop community centres in the different boroughs in, in London. And Islington, where I live at that time, um, also happened to be in within their, their, their job brief. So they asked me if I'm interested um, to join um, and help them develop the community organisation in Islington. So I said, oh, well, why not? So that's how it all started. Um, can you describe a typical day's work at the community centre? My typical day's work? Um, well, in theory, I only work two and a half days a week, but I'm usually here five, if not six, seven days. Um, because I, with commu- working with the community, you know, there's no no such thing as nine to five job. Um, you are always there when the community ne- needs you, um, and when there, when, when whenever there are activities um, happening or taking place. Um, so my my normal day will be um, in in the area of management because as a CEO, I'm involved in um, in the management and the fundraising uh, aspects of the of the association. Um, I will spend quite a lot of time talking to our users because it's only through talking to them that uh, we can receive feedback as to um, w- what they expect you know, our services um, to be um, and whether we're actually listening to their needs. So um, I feel it's important to have that conversation with the members and the users.
How has your day-to-day involvement changed in the centre? Well, I think basically, um, because of the of the change of the composition of the Chinese community, so obviously, you know, their demands and needs are very different as well as from when we first started back in 1985. Um, over the past 10 years or so, I mean, we witnessed quite um, quite a, a large um, influx of um, of um, Chinese from the mainland. Um, China and therefore we have to start um, adjusting ourselves to accommodate their needs and um, and their demands. Um, I mean, one of the changes, for example, I wouldn't say change, but I suppose one of the adjustment that um, we have um, we have experienced over the past five, six, seven years is the is um, the need uh, to speak in Mandarin or to be able to understand them uh, and and communicate to or with them or two of them, you know, in the language or the Chinese dialect that they speak. Um, so that is quite a big adjustment. Um, and of course, you know, also, um, other than the, um, the, uh, the human aspect, um, we, I mean, like all other community organizations, uh, we face quite a, a, a lot of hardship, you know, in terms of funding cards, uh, limited funding um, uh, uh, opportunities, so that is also quite a, a huge um, change as well. Talk about these changes. How have they sort of impacted your personal involvement with the centre from when you first started? Well, I mean, certainly, I mean, life gets tougher and tougher because you know, without money um, or without sustainable funding, um, it's very difficult to plan ahead. Um, so, more or less, you know, I spend most of my time actually looking at um, um, at. Um, trying to, to look for different funding opportunities, um, meeting people, um, you know, promoting our services, you know, talking to, to the council, um, or even you know, just explaining to our members that um, you know, there, there are so much restrictions that you know, as much as we want to, um, to develop our services you know, without sustainable funding, you know, it is very difficult because most of the project money are time-limited. So you know, as soon as you get the the the, the, the funding secured, um, you have to start looking at various funding avenues to carry on the project. You know, once it runs out, um, as and when it finish. So you know that that, that is a huge challenge. How do you feel the centre's relationship with business has been? Well, with Chinese business, I think um, I think all Chinese community organisations. Uh, we'll say that um, you know, on the whole, Chinese business groups are very supportive um, in in what um, the Chinese community organisations um, do. Um, so they will they will try and support in different ways. For example, you know, giving you vouchers, you know, for your fundraising activities, uh, for your raffle prices, or um, they will support um, a particular activity that you run. For example, like Chinese New Year. Um, so. Yes, I mean, having been around for so many years, you know, yes, we have um, established, you know, quite, um, quite um, good relationship with the Chinese business sector. Um, what about the relationship with other Chinese community centres in London? Well, that is, um, I have to say, a very tricky bit because, um, sadly, Chinese community groups are very insular, and um, they do not show much interest in working with other groups um, in. I think in, perhaps you know, in fear of competition. Um, in the past, we had approached um, a few Chinese community centres in the hope, you know, to to perhaps you know, um, step, uh, to, to create some partnership um, uh, relationship. Uh, unfortunately, um, our requests were turned down. So, I think the reason, as I said just now, I think they do fear. Competition, but I think from our point of view, because resources are so limited, it's very difficult, you know, to and it's, it makes no sense as well to duplicate services. And I, I think a lot of people notice that you know the people, the Chinese um, uh, people, you know, who are able to go from one organization to another, another organization, and to participate in their activities, are those who have a lot of time in their hand. Who are who are mainly probably retired, so you find you know if you do one if you organize one activity, you find that you know all these people they go from they they they're all the same faces, 
So I think the the, um, the the idea of us trying to work in partnership with other com- community groups is really in the hope of working, being able to work together. And I think if we can do that, we can show to our funders that we can cooperate as well. I think that is very important. But sadly, I think as of today, I don't, I don't, I don't know how many Chinese community groups really have a, a strong desire you know, to work together. And also the danger is that everybody wants to be leaders. They do not want to work with other people. So that is, that is a shame, I think, in some way. How have you worked with local bodies such as Islington Council? And uh, what sort of relationships do you have with these? Well, as the only Chinese voluntary um, group in Islington, I mean, it is natural that we work very closely with the council. And uh, having been around for some 27 years, um, we received tremendous support from all the politicians and the, the, the council staff as well. So we, we are very lucky in that respect. And how are you able to provide these services, such as how are you able to fund them? I know that the council often plays a role in this. Well, we do a lot of fundraising. Um, we have um, uh, we rely a lot of um, donations as well, um, uh, quite a bit of sponsorships, and uh, we apply to um, uh, grant giving um, bodies as well. So, um, yeah, I mean there there are various ways of um, of um, securing funding, but um, on the whole, we are quite self independent. Um, so. That's how we um, we are able to um, organise um, our services and activities. And you've, since you've been here quite a while at the centre, um, can you tell us how the centre has evolved from when it was sort of first founded? Well, as I said earlier, um, the composition of the Chinese community has has changed over the years, um, but um, the and, and 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 the social. And economic backgrounds and ethnic backgrounds are very different as well. Um, so, uh, but the demands and the needs are endless. Um, but unfortunately, at the same time, you know, our our resources are very limited as well. Um, so there hasn't been much change in terms of having to 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 secure the funding to provide that to to, to meet the needs and demands. Um, so, I think it's still you know a, a long process. So, has, I mean, has this meant any changes in services that you've been able to offer, or have a demand has risen for certain services over the years? Well, it is difficult because I, I think um, as being you know a very small organization, uh, you know, which runs on a very tight and small budget. Uh, we can only provide the services we're able to. But I think over the years, we have actually moved away from uh, the sort of typical community services to a more diverse organization, providing um, uh, uh, services to a more sort of multicultural um, audience. Um, for example, no, other than um, providing uh, community services, activities, information and advice, and advice um, uh, cultural activities, etc. Uh, I think we are more we're more uh, are keen to promote the cultural and the art side um, of um, of the uh, of the spectrum. So the, the the I think the audience is very different as well now, um, as you notice from our 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 luncheon club um, um, uh, users just now. Uh, is not just open to Chinese now. We have people from, you know, the Indian subcontinent, you know, from different countries like, you know, with Japanese members, you know, Korean members. Um, so that has uh, that that has changed a lot over the years. So you'd say it's become more diverse. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, I think we are one of the very few Chinese community organisations um, that that works very hard to ensure that our services are diverse and, and also very in, innovative as well. Um, and that is one thing that um, you know, we, 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 we are very um, keen to promote. And I think one other thing that has changed over the years is um, in the past, our, our, the chair of our management committee has always been Chinese. But since um, 2009, our, our 
our chair is English. I mean, white English. And um, and I think this is also, you know, quite a quite a a, a, new, a change um, from the sort of um, conventional setup um, of the of the management committee. Um, what motivated the decision to move to the current site that we're on in Hatchet Road? Well, when we were in the old premises, um, the council decided to um, sell the premises to St John Ambulance um, as a training centre. So we had to look for other places to, to move to. Uh, it just so happened that the um, St Gabriel's Catholic Church um, was very accommodating to allow us to um, use these premises. So we've actually moved from a small premises to a bigger one. So it's actually allowed like a positive outcome and allowed the centre to expand? Oh, absolutely. I think without the space... Um, you know, it is it is impossible you know to put on the services and the activities that we do now, and we have a Chinese saying that um, it's a good sign that you move from a small place to a bigger place and then the bigger place. So I mean that's what what we have been experiencing over the the past twenty seven years. So um, we as a, as a, an organisation we're definitely going from strength to strength. What are some of the difficulties facing London's community centres presently? Well, I think if you speak to um, all the community organisations, you know, I think funding is the biggest concern. And, um, well, obviously, you know, without funding, you know, you, you, the, there's no way that you can employ the right people uh, to, 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 to work um, and to develop the services. Um, and also, I think human resources is very uh, important. Um, I find that over the years it is very difficult or well, it has been rather difficult to identify people who are forthcoming enough to say, I have a passion you know, in doing community work. Um, and my worry is, um, in due course, that volunteerism or people who are interested you know, in, in, the prom- in promoting or even helping the Chinese community to develop um, is going to, to be to become less and less. So that is something that I do worry. Is there any way you think it might be possible to change that, to get people more interested in volunteering? Well, I, I think um, charity should start from home. I think unless the Chinese community themselves feels that it is important that we have to raise our profile, we have to do... I mean, if we don't help ourselves, we cannot rely on other source of help. But having said that, I, th- I think it has actually improved over the years, but still we, we are not doing um, well enough to, to actually you know, control our own fate um, and our own destiny and sort of say, you know, look, you know, we as a communica- uh, community should get together and work together. Um, you know, I hope that day will come. Since you've been at the community centre, have there been any significant events? Uh, yes, quite a few. Um, many years, well, some years ago now, I wouldn't say many, uh, some years ago, um, we were very honoured to have the visit of um, Mrs. Betty Tung, the, um, the, chief of, uh, the wife of the former chief executive of the Hong Kong Special Administrative uh, Region. Um, she was here on two separate occasions. Uh, we also had um, our two patrons, um, the Baroness uh, Lydia Dunn and Mr. Shuri Blair, visited us. Um, and I think we are also the only Chinese community organization uh, which work with the other uh, East Asian communities um, in, in hosting the, um, the East Asian Friendship Concert. Um, and um, the, I think the East Asian Chinese Association... Uh, is proud to um, to be the first, I, I, th- I think anyway, um, the first um, Chinese community organisation who works with the um, other East Asian community communities to um, pr- uh, in the pro- in promoting friendship through a series of uh, concerts. And um, 2013 is the third event. How have those uh, events gone in the past? Um, very well indeed. Um, and, well, other than these concerts, um, I also um, 
hosted a concert, uh, my own concert, I would say, uh, three years ago um, to help fundraise for the East Indian Chinese Association. And um, I'm pleased to say that um, we managed to raise £10,000 for the association on that occasion. And um, also, um, the other significant event, I, I, I should say, is um, in, tw- 2005, uh, in 2005, uh, we are the only Chinese community organization in England um, that received the Queen's Award for um, Voluntary Services. Um, so so we, we're very proud to have received that award. And of course, you know, uh, one of my colleagues, Dr. Stephen Ng, uh, also uh, received his MBE award um, last year, 2012. Do you hold any celebrations for the various Chinese festivals throughout the year? Uh, definitely, <laughs> like um, other Chinese community organizations, we have we have, we have um, or we celebrate Chinese New Year, um, Mid Autumn Festival, Dragon Boat Festival every year. So all the major Chinese cultural events or fest- festivities, yes. Can you tell me a little bit about the role of a board and committee members and the founders? Well, um, the major role is, or they're elected you know, to provide. Uh, sound governance to the organization, of course, and they are also responsible for um, policy and decision making as well as monitoring all the financial activities. What would you say the best thing about your job is my best the best thing about my job I would say is the opportunity to meet people from different parts of the world other than you know Chinese uh, people uh, what's the worst thing about your job? Uh, endless. <laughs> well, it's very frustrating, um, you know, working with people, especially in a community setting. You know, it's e- it's inevitable. You know that you have to deal with gossips every day. I mean, it's very destructive. I must, I have to say, um, and you know, in in my job and in my role, um, I have to be able to to make sure you know that these are resolved, um, uh, or these issues and problems are resolved. And funding is a big issue, um, and it's and it's also frustrating, you know, to to have to to um, to look for funding, you know, sort of day in and day out. Um, so these are are difficult tasks to 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 do um, or to to undertake. Where would you say that your attitude and ethics concerning work come from? My ethics: um, be true to myself, be patient, be honest and um, be accountable. Do you think that they have any sort of origins, maybe in your family or heritage? Um, well, I think, um, you, know, you know, having sort of, a, you know, or being educated in, a, in an Italian convent school, uh, I meet all my, my, my friends, uh, you know, come from all over the world. So I was very lucky you know, to be actually nurtured, you know, in a multicultural uh, environment. So I think my, my, my world view is, is, is very extensive and that helps me to be able to, to get along with people from, from different backgrounds. And um, the other influence I have, which is very important, I think, is that I'm married to a lawyer uh, who is now a high court judge. So um, I always believe that, you know, that we have to abide by the law all the time and uh, and I also, I also apply that to um, to my work at at the association, and I also make sure that um, uh, the the board uh, or the management committee um, do everything above board and act properly, um, uh, and be accountable to the members and the and the funders. Is your job very busy, and would you say that it fits well with, with your personal life? It's very busy. It's um, it's always busy. It's endless. I mean, I think working with people, you know, you can't just sit in your office and sort of just concentrate on your work. So, yes, I mean, the, the, the busy time sort of more or less, you know, evolves you know, around the members, about, around the work that I have to, or the physical work that I have to do uh, in terms of, you know, uh, meeting people, uh, meeting funders, you know, um, going to meetings, you know. So it is very busy. And what do you do for recreation? I enjoy singing, um, and um, I like window shopping because I think it's a very good th- therapy 
uh, it sort of um, open your eyes to nice and beautiful things and forget about your worries at the same time. So, so that's something that I enjoy doing in my spare time. The singing, do you get involved with the singing classes at the community centre? Well, actually, I co-founded the, um, the singing group here back in 1991. Um, I'm not so involved now, but um, uh, yes, I was very involved you know, when I first started the group uh, because I think um, that um, uh, singing is a very pleasurable pastime. Um, it's, uh, it's only when you sing that you, 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 you're more sort of uh, absorbed you know, by, by, the, by the music and the lyrics. And I think that is very therapeutic. How would you say that over time, uh, whilst working at the centre, how have you managed your role? Has it got, has it got easier? Has it got harder? Uh, I don't think it, it will ever get easy. It will, it will get harder because um, the, 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 the makeup of the Chinese population is certainly changing and will continue to change. Um, the demands and the needs will also change. And I think the personnel, the people who actually run the services, will also you know, will get older and older. And hopefully uh, there will be a new wave of uh, younger people who feel the, the, who feels the importance of continuing community services. Because I think the younger generation um, really cannot see or shows no interest in carrying on that community work spirit. So you think this is one of the big challenges that the London Chinese community face? Absolutely. I think so, yes. Uh -huh. Because if you go around um, Chinese community organisations, you, you see that the people who actually run the services, they are not that young. And most of them have been there for years and years, like myself. Um, and sometimes I do wonder that, uh, I always say to my management committee, the people who are always active in community work, they are always active. But also sadly, they are expected to continuously run their services without people succeeding them. And I think over the years, you know, this will be um, a huge challenge for the Chinese community. And I do wonder as well whether and how long community organizations' role can carry on um, if there are no proper or qualified successes. Do you think that perhaps this might be a reason that it's important that the different community centers across London can work together? Because you mentioned that they have a lot of overlapping services. I don't know how um, they will eventually realize the importance of working together. For example, you know, if I'm a funder, I would say to, I mean, if I receive a funding, uh, funding applications from four different Chinese community organizations for one particular funding, I would find it difficult to decide or to make the decision as to who the funding should go to. Instead, I would probably suggest to these organizations um, that why don't they actually join up and work together. And um, as I said earlier, I think that sense of, of fear um, of competition rather than working you know, in, in, um, in complement, it's something that, um, that we, we, we would not be able to get over, unfortunately, and unless and until you know we we can we see that the import the importance of that essence of um, of um, of um, working in partnership, it is very difficult um, to come together. You've also been involved in engaging the Chinese community politically mm -hmm. and trying to increase um, involvement with campaigns like Chinese for Labour. Mm -hmm. How do you feel that these campaign, campaigns like this can increase the profile of the Chinese community? Well, I think, um, I think political groups or um, other activities, or whatever you call them, can only help the Chinese themselves to improve their profile. 
they, they, they can be motivated, they can be encouraged. But at the end of the day, it's down to the Chinese themselves um, to realize the importance of the, the voice being heard. Be, belonging to a political group myself, um, of course, you know, um, I have a duty to ensure that Chinese engage themselves politically, not so much in just you know coming out to to vote, but even before they vote, they have to register, you know, to exercise their civic responsibilities as the, as well as their civic duties. So. Um, Yes, I mean, if we have a voice, if we can exercise a voice in a positive way, ultimately, yes, we can raise our profile. We can influence policy decision makers. You know, we can, we can improve our status in this country. But unfortunately, I think most of the Chinese would just lay back and just um, complain and moan. Um, about you know the, the 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 system, about you know their voices not being heard, um, without taking the first step of actually coming out and represent themselves. Um, so yes, I mean ultimately, you know, as as a, 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 a political activist, I would like to see Chinese being elected into the, the House of Commons, you know, into um, or engage in other public bodies, you know, for example, in being a governor in the schools, you know. Um, being, you know, um, a gov- governors in in other public bodies, you know, so that is that that is how we should engage ourselves and integrate more extensively in in the British society and eventually become a true British Chinese. Do you feel that there's some progress being made there? I mean, more Chinese British Chinese have entered sort of the public uh, sphere. Oh yes, of course, you know. Um, because um, there are lots of able and influential Chinese in the country you know, who have done quite a lot of work to encourage and to promote you know, that, um, that, that Chinese participation in wider society. But I think basically because political education or social um, involvement or participation is not, is not part of our family culture or family education, so, I mean, as children, you know, I think we're only taught, you know, to study hard, work hard, you know, get a good job, get a good wife, or you know, marry well. I wouldn't say called gender, okay, specifically, but marry well, and, um, you know, be a good parent. So, other than that, you know, we're, we're, we are very sort of... Um, our focus is not so much on being uh, nurtured into an uh, uh, all-rounded person, um, which is, I think, um, can be a shortcoming, you know, on our part. Well, that's the end of the questions that I have. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Well, I think uh, working or having worked in the um, in the Chinese community organization or with the community for so many years. Um, I do hope um, that Chinese can become more united um, and, 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 and being able to work together. I mean, for example, you know, I mean, I'm sure you know, quite a lot of Chinese um, community workers or, or business leaders are aware that over the past 25 years or so, um, everybody has been trying to work together to establish an extra care home for the Chinese older people in this country. And five, 25 years on, there's no progress. Um, and, you know, different Chinese community groups, you know, work, you know, on their own, you know, east, west and south, you know, <laughs> of the country. And um, there is no, no, no interest, you know, to come together um, and, and to pull all the resources together. Um, and that just shows, you know, the disunity of, the Chinese community, um, and I hope you know that we can come, we can overcome that difficulty, you know, s- soon, r- sooner rather than later. Thank you.